Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads, episode 126. Yeah. Wow. 126. Yeah, each each time it goes up there, it's like, wow, getting a little... How are you doing this week? Good. Good. A little tired, but I'm all right. I love your hat. Yeah, thanks. Too bad we're not on video. Yeah, I wear, wear that. Yeah, I got to get this video thing going. If I, well, some, we did it, and then we didn't do it, and then we did yeah, it, and then we didn't do it. I think it's more about the quality of it. I, 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 the, the, I have to change my whole rig <laughs> to make it all happen. <laughs> a lot going on. Yeah, that's too much going on. I didn't have any time. So this is an else. episode that I feel like I'm going to listen to at least 126 times. Because I need to take my own advice okay. on this one. Uh, the title of this one is Learning Patience yeah. for Your Own Sanity. For sure. So this is something that I would uh, maybe benefit from. <laughs> That's why I wanted to do this. Right. So would you consider yourself a patient person? Yeah, yeah I know you are. I'm so super patient. <laughs> I work with you. I'm patient to a fault. Yeah. Sometimes I let things linger too long. So I'm not. I don't know if you knew that or you know, maybe I've worked with you before. I, yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, so, it, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things. Patience was, you know, um, yeah, I just, <laughs> I don't know how to explain yeah, it. Sure. Sure. Got it. So I think it's first important that we understand why we lose our patience. Yeah. You know, cause we have it at some point. But yeah. we lose it. And you lose, yeah, the grip gets slipped you know? through the fingers. So what is it about situations that cause us to go wacky? Mm-hmm. If that's a good, that's a technical term. Right, wacky. Go wacky. <laughs> so here's a few. DSM-4, wacky. That, this is a disclaimer. I've witnessed these. I can't say that I have deployed all of these myself. Okay. Well, maybe. But mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm. this is not a firsthand experience. This is just me compiling different ways that people have probably People that I know, sure, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> right, uh, have lost their patience. Yeah. So the first one, expectations. Yes. Okay. So when you have expectations, you immediately set yourself up for failure. Okay. Mm-hmm. You think something should be a certain way, and it doesn't happen that way. Right. So expectations can be a killer. Okay. So expectations can cause. You to lose your patience. Okay, yeah, okay, that's where I'm going with this. If sure, it makes, it makes all sense. The second thing, being tired. Mm-hmm. We can lose our patience and be impatient when we are tired. Sleep yeah. is essential. Yeah, and when you're a parent, especially a brand new parent, uh, you have a tendency to get less sleep. Yeah, it's just that's how it goes. Yeah, you know. And when you are sleep depri- deprived, it is really easy to be irritable. And lose your patience. Yeah. People know that. I mean, it's. No, no. I, I've experienced that myself, even as, as patient as I am. Even when I'm <laughs> stupid. Uh, my cat. All right. You know, he's awesome. But he'll sit on my laptop. And I'm, sometimes I'm taking a nap on the couch or whatever. And sometimes he just sits on the laptop. And I'm like, no, don't, don't do that. So I'll just scoot him off or whatever. And the other day, he like this weekend, I believe it was, he just did it. Went too often. I'm like, just get off of that. <laughs> I was like, just yelled at him. And he's OK, sorry. Right. <laughs> he just ran off. You were tired. <laughs> I was just, and I was tired. I was right. just, just, I did not want to deal with it. At that moment. So the uh, <laughs> related to the tired is the third one. Hungry. Yes. Okay. Uh, some people call it hangry. Hangry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it could be low blood sugar for some people. <laughs> uh, you know, just just being hungry in general, it, it can cause you to act a little abnormal, get a little irritable. That that's a great way of yeah. saying it. Yeah. yeah. So you know, being hungry is not something that uh, you know. And kids are the same. Yeah. You know, and that's what we we often will blame their tantrums and you know them acting up, but basically they're just hungry. Yeah. Just feed them. Yeah. So you just have to keep feeding them, and then they don't get upset. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. That get. was a joke. Yeah. Number four, uh, somewhat related to the hunger, is displace anger. <laughs> so if you're hungry, sure. Uh, no, but displace anger means you're really mad at something else. So this could be your spouse, a coworker, friend, but. When you're in a bad place, it can easily show up as us acting out 
on someone else. And yeah, oftentimes it's, a, it's the children. It's a common thing for totally. people to do this, you know, when they just, like you said, displace their anger on something that they, it's going on in their life. And, yeah. I mean, you could be in a hurry to get somewhere, yeah. but it's ultimately like, it's not the fact that you're in a hurry. It's like, you're stressing out because you don't want to be at the place that you're going to, because mm-hmm. you're going to have to face something that, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. And oftentimes children are the recipients of that lo- you know, lack of patience, right. if you will. Yeah. So the, the displaced anger or displaced, you can even just call it displaced emotion. Right. Uh, is a, is a common one. Another big one, uh, just stress, mm-hmm. just overall stress. And so, you know, are you feeling stress, whether that, you know, it could be family drama, it could be financial stress, whatever it is, same thing. Um, these stressors can cause you to have lower patience. Sure. You know? Yeah. So what can we do to be more patient, especially with our children? Yeah. So here's a couple of things. Um, I've got a list of of good tips. So the first one, express gratitude. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. You may come home from work and their room I'm just saying some people, this might happen. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I have a friend in, yeah, the, yeah. in the Niagara you can, Falls you can area. This yeah. Years later, be like, oh, this is totally yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah. So you can come home and their room is a mess 24 hours or even five hours or, you know, but 24 hours after it was just cleaned. Mm-hmm. Even they may have cleaned it. You may have cleaned it. You may have had a big party to clean it. <laughs> and the... So what you can try to do, and this is not an easy one, is you kind of switch how you think and you think about how they live in the moment. Right. You know, they are here for the now. They are active, adventurous. Like, you know, you came home and they're like building a fort and you're just like, what did you just do that with all the sheets? You know, like. (laughs) It's a fort, dad. I know. But it's so it's looking at it in a little different way and expressing the gratitude towards whatever situation and here i'm giving the example of your children causing the impatience um whatever the situation is of having a little bit more gratitude and trying to think of it in a positive way Mm -hmm. that's all uh number two choose your battles so this is a good one about being a little bit more patient is you have to realize or think about whether this is really important or not important Mm -hmm. whatever the situation is that you're losing your patience so a good example of this is, you know, if you're going to be five minutes late, because I know I'm impatient about time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're going to be five minutes later, I shouldn't even say five minutes late, five minutes later than you thought you were going to be or that you want to be, is it going to cause a big problem? Right. You know, that may cause a little bit of an issue. You know, right. certainly if you're going to be going somewhere and you have to be at a certain time or whatever. But for the most part, it's it's not a life and death situation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, that the party starts at three o'clock and you're there at three, five, three Oh five or three ten. <laughs> right. like everybody with kids is sort of that same way. Sure. Now what that means is maybe that the next time, if it's a routine thing, the next time you have to account for that. And that's something that we'll talk about, but for that kind, that situation right then at that moment, you don't have to lose your patience right. and you can evaluate whether losing your patience is more valuable to your own health and your own sanity than being five minutes late. Right. You know? Yeah. And I think that's what people who give the impression that they don't care about those kinds of things. I think that's what they must do. I don't know that because that's not how I am. (laughs) But like for me, I don't think about it. I just get impatient, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think it might must be that, that they'd rather not bother themselves with that feeling. Yeah. You know, and yeah, because I'll explain it from that perspective. I don't like feeling that way. So I just don't. And so instead, I'll just try to at least understand. <laughs> I just try to understand what the situation is rather than go, well, this needs to happen at this time. Now, there are exceptions to that rule and I will lose my patience. And, you know, I, I yeah, as much as I am more of a type B, I do have type A tendencies at, at times when it comes to certain things. Because there are certain things I'm like, no, it has to be this way. And I'm telling you, this needs to be this way for that reason. Right. But for the most part. I just don't like feeling that way. It's like, this is just, I don't like being irritated. So yeah. I just don't get irritated. Yeah. It's weird. Like it, I wonder, cause I, you know, I, I mean, I could, I guess say the same statement. I don't like being irritated, but is that wrong? Maybe there is something about it that's like, that's just my natural state. <laughs> you know, <laughs> homeostasis is irritated. <laughs> well, yeah. Or just more being more comfortable with it. It's, yeah. it or it's, it doesn't, I don't know, but I can't say that because it does bother me. 
Right. You know? Yeah. And I guess it, it would bother me too. There's certain things that do bother me, like I said, but I think there are situations where I'm like, I understand it to a point where it, it wouldn't bother me. I'm like, yeah, sure. We're five minutes late. I get it. You know, I, we, it was took a while to yeah. do this. Stuff. Yeah. And I think I've, I've had to learn how to do that with the kids. Of course. Obviously. My yeah. patience is so much better I now imagine. with the kids yeah. because you just have to be right. like, you, you're just not in you don't control have of the they situation. Don't have, yeah. They don't have the same. Oh, mindset. look at this flower. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dad, I'm going to sit here for a while and look yeah. at the flower. You're like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. We need to go. <laughs> you know, well, they're, they're littler. They can't move as fast as you oh totally so. all right <laughs> uh number three take a break um that's just simply walking away from the situation give yourself some time to calm down mm-hmm. you know you feel yourself getting impatient just i'm out of here yeah you know uh yep. or i'm gonna be in the other room take or, a breather yeah you know do that uh number four take five deep breaths you can take 10 deep breaths you can take 20 deep breaths but i just gave the number five <laughs> but don't hyperventilate yeah <laughs> um breathing for sure helps you slow your heart rate Mm -hmm. Um, gives you time to pause, you know, and I know that I, you know, I meditate daily Mm -hmm. and part of that is the breathing. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I for sure can feel my heart rate getting slower and even, what I can say is my, my blood pressure in a sense, cause you know, I may have a tendency to have a higher blood pressure mm-hmm. that I can feel when I'm breathing and I'm calmer. I can actually feel my body slowing. Yeah. It's really cool, you know, to be that in tune with it yeah. until I feel it. it's just, I have to remind myself to do it. <laughs> right. Like there's even times throughout the day where I might actually remind myself like at lunch or whatever to be, okay, let me slow down for a second. Yeah. Like I can feel how fast and my patient, how, how fast everything's going. And I kind of forget and I'm just running at such a high pace. Yeah. And everything is just, you know, so I have to sort of slow down. Sure. You know, um, so just interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, number five, count to 10. So sort of like the breathing, um, it gives you a small break that you can think before you act, you know, take that pause by counting to 10. Mm-hmm. Um, that can provide, you know, some calmness and in, in from a potential chaotic situation, you know, and especially when you lose your patience and you know, you're going to, you might potentially say something or do something that is probably not what you want Mm -hmm. or not ideal by counting. You can obviously then slow that down and it gives you, gives you a chance to breathe. You know, maybe you're about to yell or you're about to do something or, you know, whatever it'll give you a chance to just calm down. Um, number six, face your anger. So we talked about, you know, one of the reasons why, you who lose your patience is this displaced anger or the displaced emotion. So figure out what may have caused, you know, what is that anger or mm-hmm. what's that emotion that probably should be dealt with? Yeah. You know? A lot of psychi- coming from a psychology background myself, it's like, that's a huge part of healing yeah. is to kind of just look back and go, what am I really angry at? Or yep. what am I really sad about? And feel context? it and then feel it and then allow yourself to feel it. Right. Right. And just, yeah. So don't let it, let it linger. Just figure out what it is deal with it or make a plan or right. you know something. So yeah. that's, a, that's a big one. Um, another one I was taught this in my parenting classes, put your number seven, put your hand on your heart. Hmm. So, I mean, you can do it on your head, you can do it, but I, I like the heart. Um, it allows you to connect with your heart. Um, instead of always thinking through a situation, which I will often do being more cerebral, uh, you feel the situation. Yeah. So, you know, when you put your hand on your heart, you can often then feel your heartbeat and it has an effect of slowing you down, sort of like the breathing. You're sort of forced. I mean, when you actually like put your hand on your heart or on your chest, um, you have a tendency to approach the situation a little bit differently and even may deploy empathy, mm-hmm. you know, and I have noticed that there's been a situations where I feel myself getting a little bit charged and then I, it's kind of to remind myself like, OK, like what's going on here? Yeah. But why am I feeling this way? Right. You know, um, and you sort of can feel it like you can feel the thickness in your chest. Yeah. You know, if that's yeah. a place that you that you hold that. Sure. So that can do it. Uh, number eight, reset your expectations. So in that situation where you had high expectations or any expectation of how the outcome was going to be and you lost your patience as a result of not, you know, or of having those expectations, realize that maybe your expectations were too high. Yeah. You know, that's usually a big part of it is just setting too high of expectations. Yeah. I mean, as a parent, like, you know, on a weekend, like are you trying to get to three different birthday parties in one day, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Hey, we have a 10 o'clock, a two o'clock and a six o'clock, you know, like just maybe two would have been enough. Yeah. You know, the expectations that you have to do everything and be everywhere. And 
um, it's it's difficult. You know, a, a, a very very common one is is running uh, the kids to school in the morning mm. and, and potentially being late. You know, for the kids to get them to school. You know, they're not going to go to jail. <laughs> For being late, sure. you're not going to be labeled the worst parent in the world, which is a lot of what parents are worried about. Right. Um, you really, you know, for that day, take a buy. You know, okay, I'm just it's, we're going to be late. I, I'm just not going to get stressed out over this. Right. And plan better next time. Yeah. You know, and that you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff with that of planning <laughs> better. To, and in fact, that is the last one, number nine. Plan ahead. Mm-hmm. So. The example of the morning routine, getting the kids to school, you could make lunches the night before, you could have them set out their clothes the night before, you know, post a schedule of here's what happens in the morning. I mean, all kinds of things that you can do to plan yeah. to reduce that anxiety and patience, loss of patience yeah. th- at that time. Like that, you know, you say every morning I'm stressed out because that, I mean, and that happened with us. It's like every morning of feeling like you're in a hurry mm-hmm. to get out to school. It's, it's painful, Yeah, you know? So we had to do that. We had to put up a schedule, you know, and granted they learn it as they get a little bit older, like, yeah. like, you know, towards the end of this year, like it was fine. Like yeah. they're like ready to go, you know, once in a while I'd have to say something, but for the most part, like they, they, they're starting to get it. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'll change as they get a little older and they get more like, no, I just want to sleep in. Um, <laughs> right. Teenage years. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they, 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 they get it, you mm-hmm. know, and they're, they're coming along. Just, it's only the 3000th time that it took <laughs> right. to do that, but they got it 10 years later. <laughs> they got it. Uh, if anybody has any tips or, uh, thoughts about this, Alan, what should they do? Podcast at dudes to dads.com for the email. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us on Twitter and or Facebook, Facebook is dudes to dads.com. Twitter is dudes to at dudes to dads. Mm-hmm. And, um, if you want to get to YouTube, it's Dad University. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm sure if you type news of Dad, you'll find us as well. But, yep. Um, and then also, please go to iTunes and Stitcher and leave some reviews. It really helps perpetuate the show. Um, leave doesn't matter how many stars, but preferably five. And leave some comments if you have any things you want to talk about patience or anything else we've talked about on the show. So now I'm ready to be patient. Yes. Or be a patient. Or be a patient. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it could have could have gone either way. <laughs> Anything else? Nah, we're good to go. No? Right on. So, uh, Alan, thank you again. Thank you. As always, thank you everyone who's listening out there in, uh, what do we call it, podcast world? Podcast. The, inter- the pod- in- interwebs? The ribs. Yeah. Something like that. The audio sphere. All right. Uh, we will see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>